Okay, here we go. Main segment, Newton's Law. And so many times, Peggy, we always get so caught into the excitement of the new year. Mm -hmm. But this one is going to be something that I don't think a lot of shows remember to point out. What is that, bro? I really want to play Big Brother Boo right now. Okay, Big Brother Boo. You feel Big me? Big Brother Almighty? You know, and this segment is for all incoming players, all incoming rookies, okay. all incoming freshmen, all incoming people to a uh, locker room mm -hmm. that you're the new person. Okay. Okay. We'll call this Boogie's Bylaw. All right, book is bylaws. Right? A note to all newcomers. So get your notebook out now. Get your pen and your paper. It could be freshmen. It could be rookies. It could be whatever. Mm -hmm. You the new guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So currently, Cam, the NFL's rookie transition program goes over these topics. All okay. right, every rookie has to go through this program. All right, it's a video introduction of the NFL and the league policies. All right, it's play to player benefits and benefit resources, mm -hmm. player expectations social responsibility for players, uh, maintaining strong mental health and fitness, um, introducing uh, the players to the culture, values, and history of the NFL and the Players Club, and last is the rule changes from college to pros, all right? Okay, go back real quick, Peggy, and I'm going to just keep it a buck. So because a lot of people always ask this same question, like what do they teach all these type of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do, but that's not of prioritizing information at mm -hmm. that particular given point in time yeah and i think the challenge is and will always be how can we give this information in a way that impacts the kids or the newcomers in a way that they can learn and i don't know but the nfl does their job the pa does their job with given the information and they'll probably say bro we tell y'all everything that you're going to do you're just not in that mm -hmm. realm to, to listen so yeah. go ahead and there's a lot of stuff that goes on even like this famous uh sports illustrated art article how and why athletes go broke right and so they have all the different things that leads up to it the lavish okay. spending mm -hmm. poor investment decisions supporting family and friends all right short career span lack of financial literacy Divorce and legal issues, taxes and medical expenses. So, yeah. all of the reasons that you name are it these is ranked? A lot, huh? Are these ranked? It's just in order. I don't think they rank you know higher than. You know, okay, than so let's just keep it a buck. From my experiences of mm -hmm. players, and this is not when I say my experiences, this is nothing to do with me personally. This has everything to do with what I experienced or yeah. was exposed to. Yeah. Number one. Lavish spending, yes. There are a lot of players that live above their means. Just mm. because you're in the NFL does not mean that you're a millionaire. Mm. Now, what should be number two, and it's not, should be taxes. Because mm. they're going to give you that money. But this is what you don't understand. You know who that is, knocking? Who that, bud? Uncle Sam. Damn. He going to get his money, too. Got to get me me. Yeah, yeah, I seen you buy that Cybers truck. I seen that. I seen you post all the little manyans and all them lavish vacations of you and your partners and your girlfriend. Yeah, that was cute, but. Yeah. You. I need it, baby. Go on again. I know you got it. Yeah. I see this big ass house. Ooh, it's nice, too. You. Get me, man. All that money I already spent. Oh, don't worry about it. You gonna figure it out today, cause I'm not no gonna, I'm not gonna negotiate you. You gonna have to refund uh, something. No, nah, yeah, we are gonna have to. Come on. So taxes. Uh, -huh. uh poor investment decisions. Oh my goodness, that is a, absolutely true. Cause everybody got an idea now. Yes, and somebody want like let, let let's talk about investments and let's talk about hedge funds and let's talk about these brilliant ass ideas a lot of people especially minorities don't understand that people's ideas are always meant to use other people's money mm. they call it opm other people's money mm -hmm. opm when you think about public companies elon musk for as brilliant as and as great as the brilliance that he is genius 
he's used other people's money. Bill Gates, same thing. But for you thinking that, oh man, I'm about to invest into this company. Man, I just put $500,000 in. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a return on my, no, no. And I'm saying no because I fell victim to that shit too. So you have made some bad investments. Of course, but you don't know until you know. Mm -hmm. You also made some good ones. Of course I've made some great ones. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing. Athletes must understand this. You have the ability to fuck up Mm -hmm. and still recover. Mm. Sometimes the situation that you're in may cause you to be desperate and you can't recover from that. So you made a bad investment backed with a, you ain't paid your taxes. And then you still trying to live this lifestyle where I heard some G shit and it's from the documentary broke. And I forgot the young man's name, but he said something. He said, you can live the rest of your life like a prince, very comfortable, understanding what it, everything you need, or you can live some of your life like a king. Mm. And I said, damn. Prince Harry me, man. Bro, I'm trying to take, cause, my children respond, remind me of everything that I have, and I have a lot. I got foreign cars that are rusting. But at the time, in the impulse decision, I was like, man, I got to get that Yaris. I got to get that Wraith. I got to get that F-12. I got to get the Cybertruck. I got to get that. I got to get the Bentley. I got to get the Maybach. I need it. I need me, me. <laughs> but, bro. Only when no, you drive No, it. I can't, bro. I, shit is rotting mm-hmm. in my garage. Now, the flex is I could sell it, low miles, cool, but I don't plan on selling shit. <laughs> now, why is that? Though? Because everything that I bought has a story to me. Mm. All right? It's emotional purchase. Yes, yes. These are things that I remember. Okay, I bought the Maybach when I first had my daughter, Sovereign Dior. And all my cars are matted black, but that car is matted white just because it was like a purity in me. Mm, I never knew why you kept that one, the only one white. Yeah, it was, Man, it that's was, dope. It's like, First time for everything. It's like pure. Inside yeah. white, everything white. That's my favorite car out of your car. Yeah. And I got a story behind every single one of them. But that's what my, that's how I remind myself about, okay, boom. That phase in your life. Yeah, that phase. That's what, that's what it is. So that don't mean I needed it, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. those are silly investments, but I still have them. Mm-hmm. Now, when I go down this list, too, and I'm talking about supporters of family and friends, I will tell you this. Boogie bylaws, as we're going to get to this list, everybody needs to implement this person in their life. A no man. Elaborate, boo. Capital N, capital O, Mm -hmm. exclamation point, man. Okay. Peggy. What's up? You're my no man. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) All right, go ahead. Hold on, listen. You're my no man. All jokes aside. Okay, cool. N O exclamation point man. Hello, Boog. What's good with you? What's up, bro? Hey, man. Can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. What's good with you? What you got going on, man? I'm at training camp. You know what I'm saying? About to get ready for this other prep. Man, I hate to bother you right now, man. But man, I need five thousand dollars, bro. I'm behind on my bills. I get it right back to you. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Hey, listen, man. I'm about to give you my information to my uh to my manager, or uh my money market man. Uh, his name is Peggy or Omari, and boom, y'all y'all settle it out for y'all self. Man, I really do appreciate you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All is good, bro. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna holla at you. All right, bet. Boom. Do 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 do. What you gonna say, Peggy? No. Okay, say that. For sure, cause they call my phone, ask for Your you. Your phone. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be you. Boom. Hello. Hey, is this Peggy? Yeah, this Peggy. Dang, you sound like a little bitch. But <laughs> I said, but uh, Come hey. Give me then. <laughs> Listen. Uh, Cam told me to call you, man. He said uh, you can help me out with getting this five thousand dollars. Oh, for real, 
man, listen, bro, uh, what you need it for? Ah, oh, man, I'm behind on my bills. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't think, looking at Cam's financial situation right now, I don't think he can get 5000 but he could probably give you, like, 500 uh, because he got a lot of things that's coming on, some that that's very personal, and he don't have the time, effort, and energy to be focused on that. Obviously, we getting prepared for a good season this year, man. But as you understand, man, he has a lot going on. He can't tell you, but I'm going to be the one that tell you, bro. Mm -hmm. So I'll discuss with Cam. Can 500 help? Oh, man, I really need $5,000, man. Yeah, but if it wasn't for Cam, how would you? How else would you? <laughs> how did you get back back here in the first place? You see what I'm saying? Like, hey, like, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker. Damn. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. That's a good one. I know. <laughs> you know who my no man is? What? Pop. Yeah, that is true. For years. Yeah. And I just gave you free game. Yeah. It's not saying no. You're not slapping them with a no. You massaging them with a no. Mm. But the answer is still? No. Come on. With an exclamation point. But that's when I look at supporting family and friends. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Brrr. Hey, you need $5,000? That's cool, bro. Hey, matter of fact, uh, you trying to work? Yeah. Hey, man, Cam needs his mom driving up from Charlotte to Carolina or Atlanta to Carolina. We need somebody to drive them. If you can drive her up all year, that go your five thousand dollars. Man, I ain't got no do 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 do. We gonna figure it out. Yeah. Everybody want the money, and they feel like they're obligated to your money. Yeah. And they always say, "Damn, bro, you done changed." Fuck no, I ain't changed. You changed. Mm -hmm. I'm still the same me. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because me being in my situation, everybody know I got money. Yeah. There's times where I've had a lot of cash on me. I just don't show it because I want to blend in in that particular moment. I don't want people to be looking at me for money. I don't want to be people to be looking at me as an opportunity. When you got the same amount of 24 hours, man, bro, but you know life just be life and bro. It's just 5,000, you just hit the bank for 72 million, bro. Lame ass nigga, bro. <laughs> I been known you, nigga. You like it brand new, nigga. You like it brand new. Man, fuck you. Like, oh, man, just because I ain't want to give you $5,000 of money that you said you wanted to borrow, but I know I'm never going to get back. see it back. And then 5000 going to keep adding up, adding up. Come on. I think I made my point. You made that. your point crystal clear. Say less. Here we go. So supporting family and friends, short career span. Short, short, uh, short career span goes back to lavish spending. Now, for the people who do come into the NFL, all right and they witness a lot mm -hmm. undrafted rookie walks into a locker room with an all pro a nfl top 10 player whatever they yeah. see how he's moving they see how he's maneuvering his lifestyle they see how he's posting shit. it looks good it looks very enticing jay-z said all the money in one fight all the pigeons take flight no 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 as soon as the, all that money blows all them pigeons take flight. Describing Michael, uh, Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's so easy, you're money. so easy to love when you got money. Walking into a locker room where a lot of people have a lot, you feel like that that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Man, I just seen so-and-so pull up in that Maserati truck or that Cybers, I want one of them, bro, so I had to go <laughs> But bro, you're only making 120,000 a year. Great money, but you can't afford this. And you done spent 40000 on your chain? On your number that was your college number? <laughs> you got number six in a damn Cuban link. Bling blowed out. But now in the NFL, your number 49. Come on, big dog. I hate to be the one to tell you, bro. But That's stupid. let's reel it back in. No. Lavish spending and short career span. You ain't guaranteed to play. If you understand that you're an undrafted free agent, you're basically working at will basis. Mm -hmm. They going to give you that 10000 a week and you're going to be like, bro, I'm making money, which is still good money. But, bro, as soon as the preseason gets over, it's going to be somebody that they're going to refer to as the Grim Reaper, man. Mm. 
Typically, he's going to be a very small in stature, small in presence, Caucasian man. He's going to come and call you and say, hey, brr, can I speak to Amari Collins? Amari, this you? Oh, Peg. Yeah, man, what's going on, so-and-so? What's good with you? Hey, man, can you bring in uh, your playbook and your iPad and uh, meet me in coach's office? Yeah, 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 what time? Um, it's 12, 15 right now. Can you be here by 1230? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, make sure you bring your pad, iPad, playbook, and uh, yeah, buddy. See you soon. Cool. Boom. Grim Reaper. Mm. They're going to meet you at the damn door. <laughs> and be like, hold on, hold on, man. Let me go get something to eat. No, 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 no. Come on with me. Coach this is your last supper, you. brother. Yeah. So coach got to come talk to you. Mm. How do I know this? Oh, did I, did I remind y'all? I got cut. Yeah. I would see it happen all the time. I said, oh, this shit get real. Ooh. Short attention span. Two to potentially four years is your average NFL stint. But when you see these folks outside of the NFL locker room, they was that nigga. Mm. Or they was doing this. Or they got a helmet. They got a team ball. They got a person that was actually in, there, in them trenches, bro, you wasn't who you say you was, bro. And the ones who really like that, somebody else telling you that they was like that. They don't need nobody to show them their highlights of practice or – in they the game, you man. they know who you are, bro. So while you're there, your short career span, understand that you're not here for a long time. Not for long, mm -hmm. right? Okay, divorce and legal issues. What you need to have, bro. Men won't know unconditional love. Men will know transactional love. Your girl going to come to the game in the bedazzled jersey. Peggy's girl on the back. Yeah, looking for her out there somewhere. What position you going to play, Peg? Wide out. And she going to have number 74 on. Right now, please. That's my boo. Peggy's boo. Peggy's or, boo. Oh, Peggy's Peg cookie. Yeah, you, Peggy's Peg cookie. cookie. Yeah, uh-huh. All these different things. She going to look the part. She going to have the Louboutins on. And this is another thing, too, because I'm going to tell y'all this. There's a such thing as classism in the NFL, and you got to understand how to act. Sisters that come from the cloth of support, okay? It's, it's like the big dogs. Mm -hmm. Who's been on the team the longest gives the women the longest, like, Tenure. Ten, the longest tenured chick has, like, she's the madam. She get the most. She the cool. madam. Let me show you how we do it around here. She done been there for 10 years. You come here for two or a couple weeks, and you walking in on your Christian Louboutin. <laughs> Bedazzled shirt, crop top. You new to the crew. I'm out here supporting my free agent. He said he going to practice today. Big boobs. BBL. <laughs> Syringe hips. Do it for Look, uh, but, but hear me out. What's up? Don't do that. Mm. This, look, you want to go under the radar as much as possible. Mm. And even though I'm using humor to tell and describe this situation, understand this, sister. If you don't know how to move, look around. Look around. Baby, this is not about you. If you're going to support your husband or your boyfriend, your fiance at training camp, do not try to stick out. Do not try to wear the, the most extravagant, most expensive shit because everybody got money. Don't try to have your ass showing. It's 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 honest, but it's it's true. You gotta have this level of respect. Because I'm gonna tell you, going back to that discussion of camp eyes, everybody's looking, but nobody's talking. Hold on, coach. 
Tony, hold on, Tony. Tony, we on the water break, coach. We gotta eat some time. Hey, who the fuck is that in the black right now? <laughs> yeah, with the crop top, chewing all that damn gun. With that fat ass. Like, she yeah. stacking in the back. Yeah, yeah, she thicker than dog on cold oatmeal. Who is that? Oh, that's so and so girl. The Ricky? <laughs> she don't know no better. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you something. But everybody who comes into these situations, they just feel that they got to be soft. No. Because we're going to get to Boogie's Bylaws, and I'm just going through this list. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm giving you free game because somebody has to tell you this. Baby, it ain't about how shiny your damn car is or how shiny your shoes is. Is the person that you're supporting, is he doing his motherfucking job? We both gonna be out of one. So I'm trying to tell you, you trying to shine like a queen and a king. Y'all need to be just staying under the radar like princesses and princes. Yeah. Divorce, legal issues, yeah, taxes, right. medical expenses. Medical expenses, the, the team covers all that shit, so that shouldn't even be on that. But understand this. What's up? <laughs> Protect yourself. Well, let's do, you so to. so for folks understanding like oh why I gotta sign a prenup if that like no baby look we're not gonna make that about this and this is not the discussion it's kind of talk about that but I'm trying to tell you you know me I know you mm -hmm. you know how to make me mad I know how to make you mad and we're gonna come to an understanding of who gonna win because I know what makes you mad I can't hit you I don't want to hit you but I'm going to hit them pockets because I know that's what you care about. We going to hit them pockets <laughs> like Jose, Jose Canseco juiced up. We going to hit them like them pockets. Sammy Sosa, man. Mark McGuire, man. We going to hit them pockets because I know that's what you care about. Yeah, Ask from the person that loves you or yeah. you had love for. You going to bury bonds the pockets, bud. Bury bonds that bill fold. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. Down, so, now that I got your undivided attention, Pickett, I know mm. we've been taking a long time to get to this point. Because this is what I'm waiting on. The Boogie Bylaws. The Come Boogie on. Bylaws. R.S. Follows. I got five of them. Okay. And we can cre we could have created ten of them. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, rookie, newcomer, freshman, all over. These are five things you need to understand as you're going into a new phase of your life. Okay. Rule number one. All right. Shut the fuck up and work. Okay. I had to say it like that. Pedro, How you say I, it? Shut the fuck up uh -huh. and work. All right. Nobody cares who you once were. I don't care how you was drafted, how high you was, if you was drafted at all. I don't care how you was recruited. I don't care you was the number one player. I don't give a damn, bro. Look around. All them folks left. You may ask yourself. Who, who left, boy? All the people who gave a fuck about you being a five-star recruit, the first pick of the draft, and all that shit, motherfucker. Because all this shit is equal right now. Yeah. Nobody gives a damn. Come into this locker room ready to prove yourself to this team and lose your ego. We don't give a damn. Bro, man, we used to, man, we, my high school to kill your high school. Nigga, we is. <laughs> we getting ready for a university of whatever training camp. What the fuck are we still talking about high school for? Yeah. We at the same high school. You went to a 1A school, I went to a 5A school. Cool. Guess what? We in the same <laughs> locker room. Facts. Motherfucker, you was drafted number one. I was, wasn't drafted at all, but guess what? We in the same motherfucking uh, locker room. Got the same jersey. We, in a, we, we locker mates. Damn. Yeah. Different numbers. Yeah. So please, homeboy, shut the fuck up and come in here ready to work. Understand that you must understand proving your value to the team and losing your ego is what is at its utmost importance. Rule number two. Find you a great vet and learn from them. Mm. And this can happen indirectly or this can happen directly. Okay. What do you mean by that, Boog? I yeah. am saying this. The vet that did not know 
that I was learning from him, and he probably still doesn't know this, but the cat is out the hat now. Ryan Khalil. Hmm. How much older is Ryan than you? Ryan was four years older than me. Okay. But I studied him. I looked at him every single day. The way he ate, the way he, his attitude was going into the team meetings. When did he come into the team meetings? What is what did he complain about on the field? Did he do treatment? Was he a good guy? Was he a family guy? Did he take notes? Did he bring a notebook in? Was he one of the guys that was just too big or, 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 or too caught up into him being all pro, a pro bowler? All these type of things I paid attention to. And I would think you would look at another quarterback no. or somebody like that. And it may happen that way. Because yeah. I had a, a great example of that, Derek Anderson, mm -hmm. person who – was from Oregon, Portland, Oregon, or some part of Oregon. I don't fucking know, but everybody knows D.A. to be this free spirit of a guy. Yeah. He walked around the damn facilities barefoot. Good guy. I mean, bro, he knew his shit. Yeah. He knew his shit. And the thing that I respected about D.A. was that he always, I never could beat him to work. Mm. And, boy, when I started beating him to work, that's when my career took off because mm. it was a competitive thing. He drove a fucking white Range Rover, and I knew it was his because he had an Oregon license plate. And every time I tried to beat him to work every day, and when I started beating him to work, that's when my career took off. Mm. I had to find things to do. That's why when people would see me on the treadmill, it wasn't. It was like, bro, I, in my mind, I got to get to work before DA. DA never knew this. And I didn't start beating him to work until at, like around my fifth year. <laughs> and but that's the thing, that's he would just up. find things to do, but he would show up, and people knew DA's here. Yeah. Whether he was getting treatment, ice tub, cold tub, rehab, getting extra cardio, going over the game plan, there all these different things. I learned directly from DA, indirectly from Ryan Khalil. Yeah. And it could be different players. As my career kind of took on other things, there were other players that I would be so fond of, of how they would prepare and how they would be inside the locker room. Luke Keekley was an unbelievable teammate. Unbelievable. I would look in, you know, when he wasn't there, he would leave his uh, notebook sometimes, and I would just go through his notebook just to see. I just wanted to see. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to see how he prepared. Because I was so curious to know how he processed information. I will <laughs> literally like, I remember this time where I was about to leave. It was like about seven o'clock. Practice usually ends around three o'clock, right? So it's about seven, eight o'clock and I'm walking out. And you know, I just open, cause you can't really tell if anybody's in there yeah. because it's just one or two people in there. I would always open up the linebacker room to see if Luke was there. This particular time, I seen Luke in there. And I went back into my room, and I found something to do. Mm. So these things, I, I, I just could not allow a person to outwork me. And I guarantee you this, any competitor knows, I'm pretty sure Luke did the same thing with me. Mm. It was, a, it was a healthy competition. It wasn't envy that was just like, why the fuck Luke is fucking Hall of Fame type. I seen this motherfucker work. I seen his preparation. He, oh, he, he's deserving of everything that he gets. Yeah. So I looked at him. We didn't play the same position, and we wasn't on the same team for the most part of the time we enjoyed each other because we went against each other every day practice, at practice. Yeah. But he helped me become a better player. Rule number three, you're only a rookie once. Enjoy it and learn as much as you possibly can. What I mean by that? What's up, bro? Hey, rookie. Man, going to get the bless, the bless the room with Krispy Kreme donuts every Friday. It ain't for you to just be like, man, who the fuck y'all? <laughs> nah. Because the real ones know. <laughs> fuck is he talking to? <laughs> Motherfucker, we said go get some Krispy Kreme donuts. Matter of fact, 
we want you to go get your Krispy Kreme donuts and Dunkin' Donuts. You don't need that many goddamn donuts. You don't. But that's it's it's a respect, respect thing. thing. Yeah. The people who are shit veterans are shit rookies. Yeah. And I hated to see this transition from this player because he was a shit rookie. And then the next year, he wanted the rookies to do everything that he didn't do. It don't work like that. He yeah. wasn't in the league too long. <laughs> yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I did. The guys saying. who not buy in, but, yeah, the guys who buy in to becoming a rookie, like, damn, bro, it is what it is. This is, this is my respect to the team, what y'all boys need. Man, all we asking you from you rookies, just make sure all our snacks is always, you know what I'm saying, loaded. Man, you know, Big Boy, he like them hot Cheetos. Big Frank, man, he like sunflower seeds. Motherfucking Jaquez, man, he like the motherfucking Slim Jims. Yeah. The man. ones who are great rookies end up being, they, it's, they gotta understand, it's levels to this shit. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And you're only a rookie once. Mm. Number four, control your environment. Do not allow personal life to bleed into professional life. Mm. I will say this again. Control your environment. Do not allow your personal environment to bleed into your per your professional environment. That's like family, all of that? All that. All that. Because when the shit get bigger than the rabbit, what you gotta do? You gotta kill the rabbit. You gotta bro. kill the rabbit. Got to. Got to kill the rabbit. This could be your girlfriend. This could be your mama. This could be your brother. This could be your sister. This could be your best friend. This could be your new friend. This could be your agent. This could be your whatever. Yeah. Keep that personal. That's personal. When I'm on this field, don't nobody call me with that bullshit. Yeah. I don't, if it's not an emergency, man, that shit going to have to wait yeah. to after the season. That's real. Because I'm here to get to my next contract. And as soon as I'm drafted, that next day, they're trying to find my replacement. Mm. Simple. Yeah. Number five, last but not least, vets aren't expecting you to get it. Okay. And that can be the team too. The team is not expecting you to get it. They're just expecting you to care. And they're just expecting you to give a fuck. Don't be one of those guys that come into the meeting like, man, fuck this shit, man. I, I slept late, man. Like, yeah, what it is. No, nigga, what the fuck? What? Nah. This is the same. I'm depending on you to get this call. Yeah. I'm depending on you to make sure like, hey, bro, versus this site. Is, hey, hey, right there. Hey, Tutu, we already talked about this. I'm giving you a signal. You don't understand the signal because you bullshitting. Yeah. You worried about these hoes. You worried about buying this new shit. You worried about your jewelry. You worried about your outfit. You worried about going to the mall. You worried about going to the hookah bar. You worried about going to Miami. You worried about going to New York. You worried about everything other than getting your fucking nose into this fucking playbook and asking the proper questions in the meeting room. Because everybody typically asks a question. Anybody got any questions? Before they end it. Everybody looking around and you one of them do the... All right, Panthers on three, one, two, three, Panthers. Okay, cool. You leave and you go like, oh shit. Don't even know what you're doing. <sighs> what we just went up? No, nah, bro. Yeah. Them type of dudes don't last. Mm -hmm. There's two type of athletes in the NFL locker room. What you got? There's football players mm -hmm. and there's professional football players, and they stick out like a sore thumb. And what's the difference between that? You'll see them. Football players, they just here to play football. Professionals, they're here to not only play football, but to enrich their craft. They're the ones that's early to practice, to warm their bodies up. They're the ones that's coming to meetings with pen and paper and asking the proper questions. They're the ones that stand after the go over and watching film before the film even starts. They're the ones that's well equipped, treating their bodies like machines that it is, not putting unleaded gas in a diesel engine. Yeah. Doing any and everything. You got 12 hours to dedicate to yourself. That's how I looked at it. It was like, yo, if I'm coming here at 5 a.m., I can't leave until 5 p.m. Mm. And even if I leave, if I look in that damn locker room and that linebacker a meeting room and I see Luke Keekly, I'm still staying. That's just the oath that I made to myself. He didn't need to know that. Nobody else needed to know that. But that's what I did. Yeah. No, you're not going to outwork me. No. 
And why I'm coming in at 5 a.m. is because of this. I knew how I played the game. I knew I needed to be in tip-top shape. That's the only time I had to get cardio in. Mm. I don't really get all that cardio in in practice because we have to do mechanic things. We have to go with the running backs. Then we have to go make the line checks for protections with the linemen. Then we have to go do routes first error. And then we have 707. And then from that, we're going over the plays that we're going over in team like all these different things, you don't have time to be running up and down the field and doing all this. That's on your own time. Yeah. Be a professional. But just the football players, they only show up when it's time to do football things. That's real. So those type of things where how you look at this thing is it's five five different things from the Boogies bylaws. Shut the fuck up and work. Yeah. Find a good vet and learn from them. Mm -hmm. You're only a rookie once. Enjoy it. Control your environment. Do not let personal life bleed into your professional life. Vets aren't expecting you to get it. They're just expecting you to care and to give a fuck. Right there, bro, if you go in there with that type of mentality, ladies and gentlemen, I can't guarantee success. I can't do that. But what I can do is tell you, if you don't abide by some of those rules, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee failure. Mm. I can't guarantee you success. But I guarantee you go into that locker room saying, but shit, bro. I like that motherfucker. That, that presidential fucker. I just got that bitch. That bitch sexy. Man, nobody give a fuck about that shit. I got four of them bitches in my motherfucking house right now collecting dust. Come on, rookie, tighten up and catch the motherfucking ball. Yeah. It's third down day to day. It's red zone day to day. Lock in. Yeah. Okay, they bringing zero coverage. Even though breaking the huddle, you had a corner route, zero coverage, automatic. When you hear a kill, kill, kill sign, that – Corner converts to a post. But you ain't know that shit because you were sleeping. Trying to post all the motherfucking shit on your watch and shit. You got girl problems at home. Your mama keep calling the damn facility trying to look for you because of all this bullshit. I got Take care of your business, Take bro. care of your business. Are Do you, you get me, Peg? Man, I get you in your crystal clear book. You done broke it down for them boogie bylaws, mm. man. Appreciate you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's real shit, man. And I just know that a lot of guys not going to have the same opportunity as a lot of guys. That's true. Come on now. That's true. Man, they ain't never really want to fuck with me, though, bro. You are labeled a camp body. Mm -hmm. Until proven otherwise. And these are SEC reception leaders. These are all-time sack leaders at your college and this, that, and the third. And I was a fifth-round pick this year. And I, that don't mean shit. You ain't getting the job done. Yeah. Your attitude sucks. You gonna see that Grim Reaper. Yeah. Hey, make sure you bring uh, your iPad and your playbook, and they gonna give you, in return, a five-gallon trash bag. And you gotta fill it up. Either you gonna put it in there, or we gonna start from one side of the damn locker, and we gonna swipe all that shit into this damn. little black bag. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's fair.